Ready? All right, good evening. <clears throat> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Just before we begin, just a note on the uh, schedule. So first of all, all presenters are presenting in alphabetical order, so there's no uh, <laughs> favoritism. Um, we're going to hear from some presenters, and then we'll take a break for Mincha, because some people are coming to say Kaddish for Mincha at about, I think, at 25 or 35. Um, and then we'll continue, and then followed by Mairav. So we're coming right from Shavuos, and of course, Shavuos is a time we celebrate the receiving of the Torah. So of course, no better way to celebrate the receiving of the Torah than by engaging in the study of it, uh, which is partially why, um, what inspired the Rebbe actually instituted this idea of post-holiday Torah conferences, Kinos Torah, so that after the holiday, we're all inspired, especially after Shavuos, we're inspired by the receiving of the Torah, so we engage right away in studying the Torah. Additionally, the preparation for the receiving of the Torah, the last preparation on day five, just before the sixth day of Sivan, when they receive the Torah, is as we all know, where the Jews all camped at the foot of the mountain, and the verse describes they camped in the singular, by Yichan as opposed to by Yachanu, and as Rashi comments, they all camped at the mountain with one heart, as one person with one heart, so receiving the Torah is in unison. So of course, coming together in unison and hearing from members of the community is a good way to combine both these ideas together, especially Torah and unity. And one last word on the connection between Torah and unity. The truth is that what really unites all Jews, the one factor that unites all Jews, past, present, and future, is Torah. I was having this conversation with uh, Martin over Shuis. You're stealing my thunder. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, people talk about preserving Jewish identity and people talk about Jewish culture when the truth is, what exactly is Jewish culture? Is it uh, gefilte fish or is it cleats? Uh, uh, is it tafina or is it cholent? Is it the hat this way or the hat that way? And then if you back up a couple of more generations with some other dress and some other language and some other food, so what really unites Jews, past, present, and future is, there's only one thing that if I met any of your great-great-grandparents, randomly, there's only one thing that we would have in common to talk about, and that is Torah. You can ask them, which section of Talmud are you studying? Oh, very nice, we can, talk, we can talk Torah. So Torah really is what unites all Jews, both past, present, and future. So it's definitely apropos that coming from Shavuos, where we unitedly receive the Torah, we celebrate study of Torah in unison and as a community. So without further ado, First presenter in alphabetical order, also a lady, should come first as well, is the Perry Kaplan. Good evening. I'll start off by saying there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is the original speech was 30 minutes long. The good news is it's no less than half of that. Tonight I'll be talking about how three special months on a holiday all combined to offer clues and insights into our personalities, our characters, and our relationships. By the end of the talk, we'll have looked up into the heavens to the very edges of the physical universe, and we will also look inwards into our own psyches. We'll examine how character traits govern our closest relationships, all from clues thousands of years old. We'll look briefly at the uniqueness of Torah and why teenagers can at times be so challenging. Finally, we'll talk about how we all act like sheep, bulls and twins, and all at the same time. As Rabbi Levi named this talk, Nisan, Iyar, and Sivan, the trilogy in divine service, we'll start with some background. Nisan, Iyar, and Sivan are the first three months in the calendar. All three months are physically and spiritually connected through a 49-day count called the Omer. The count begins in Nisan with the birth of the Jewish nation. From Nisan, the connective count passes through the month of Iyar and finally into Sivan. Fifty days after it begins, we're gifted with the precious Jewish holiday we just celebrated, Shavuot. 
This holiday marks the day some 3,300 plus years ago when we received the Torah and how it changed our relationship with God, with each other, and with the entire world. The Torah is not a casual document made up of fascinating stories and rules. There are many layers of symbolism and meanings contained within. It's so carefully constructed that each word, its spelling, and even its relationship within a sentence all combine to offer teachings and meditation. Torah is so precise that emitting an aleph from a commonly spelled word has our sages offering commentaries on commentaries. Both letters and numbers in Torah are replete with symbolism. Symbol aleph in one iteration suggests the heavenly connection, with its yud on top representing God, its yud at the bottom representing humankind, and a line connecting both speaks to an unbreakable bond between Hashem and us. Just as our trilogy of connective months, numbers hold breathtaking meaning as well. The number one symbolizes solitude and simplicity, uniqueness, shemachod. The number two symbolizes duality and complexity. One and two are polar opposites. The number three comes along to counterbalance with peace and harmony. Three absorbs the opposites of one and two while maintaining their unique characteristics. Three harmoniously includes both opposites, yet creates a new identity. In a sense, the purpose of the third month, Sivan, is to fuse the prior two months in its preparation to the lead-up of receiving the Torah. During the past several weeks, we read how the fledgling Jewish nation experienced gains and losses during the Omer period as it journeyed from Egypt to Sinai. But what about the numerical nature of the three months? What significance can be found with respect to the history of the Jewish people and its calendar? Historically, in second month of ER, the joyful time between Passover and Shavuos contains tragedy. In the latter part of the first century, 24,000 student sages of Rabbi Akiva died from a horrible plague. Joy interrupted. The death of the students sparked consequences lasting thousands of years until this very day. We go as a nation from joy to mourning. In part, no parties, no weddings, no public expressions of joy. An impactful 2,000 year old event in our history. But is there a lesson here? Judaism views all historical events as part of a moral lesson, a teachable moment. So why did the students die? One suggested reason states the underlying spiritual cause for the sad event was the students' disrespect for one another, prompting yet another question. Was their behavior somehow connected to the combination of the three calendar months? To recap, a tragic event affecting us to this day occurred within the three months 2,000 years ago, specifically in ER. We asked if the three months are somehow connected to the event, and indeed, the calendar provides insight. Midrashim and Kabbalistic writings teach that each month has an associated gagal mazalot, or in English, a zodiac star sign. The monthly, sign, monthly zodiac signs for Nisan, ER, and Sivan provide answers to our question. The symbol for Nisan is Aries, the ram or the sheep. The symbol for ER, Taurus, the bull. And finally, the zodiac sign for Sivan is Gemini, the twins. While each sign holds a myriad of layers of mystical meaning, we needn't dig too deep into the simple meanings behind these symbols. Throughout life, whether at work or at play, we encounter similar character types. Certain types of people consistently express, in, express themselves in similar ways. One personality type is meek, non-confrontational, laid back. Another character type is aggressive, always expressing and insisting on their worldviews or their disapprovals. And occasionally, we encounter that rarefied character who blends the two. Not to be confused with all the passive aggressive types we meet daily. The Gagal Mazalot for Nissan is the sheep. Sheep are submissive, relaxed, and docile. Think of the poor downtrodden Nissan slaves inside Egypt. Sheep just want to get along. The Taurus bulls of ER are aggressive and hard hitting. Sheep get run over by bulls. Sheep are followers. Bulls tend to be leaders. A person's behavior is determined by character, not by setting be it in business, marriage, or even diplomatic relationships. Trudeau or Trump, who's the bull? Perhaps the better question is, who's more full of bull? You may be thinking that, neither a, that you are neither a bull nor a sheep, 
that you're not so easily pegged, you're not so easily defined. And indeed it's true, but only to an extent. Whether you're an aggressive sheep or a mild-mannered bull, we're all on the spectrum. We're all what we are. We all do share the commonality of having both character types inside us, regardless of gender. I know a lot of female bulls and plenty of male sheep. Marriage is an excellent platform in which to view the zodiac characters. Marriages commonly come in two forms, the singular Aries sheep type relationship or the two some Taurus the bull type relationships. In the singular type marriage, one spouse overwhelms the other. This marriage combines a sheep and a bull. The subservient sheep is overwhelmed by the domineering bull. The bull's character is the only identity in this marriage. Only one will is expressed. The twosome Taurus relationship has bulls for partners. Nobody gives in. Each bully the other into getting their way. One partner gives in, but only in the face of relentless opposition. The bottom line for this marriage is a total lack of compromise and very little harmony. Both partners are very well versed in goring anyone who gets in their way. In fact, their commonality is best expressed when bullying others. To say the least, both marriage types are far from ideal. The good news, there's a third, more evolved form of marriage. Marriage 3.0, a marriage far superior to where one person is consumed by the other or both partners coexist at odds. This third type of marriage is described in the Torah. It's the Gemini or twins model. Exactly how did the Zodiac twins of Sivan model for marriage 3.0? How curious are twins? I think identical twins are pretty cool. I'm always hard pressed to tell them apart. I always need to decode who's who, and it's a challenge. Twins look and sound alike, yet they're utterly distinct and independent from one another. But it's within that distinctness that there's strength. Like twins in our Torah-inspired marriage, there should be a comfortable familiarity and an empowering distance. In the third month, in Sivan, on Shavuot, Hashem chose to marry the Jewish people, so to speak. Marriage, as described in our Torah, recognizes the equality of partners. When spouses look at one another, they're meant to see tremendous growth opportunities, both personally and as a couple. They share a common platform, whereby doing for the other is much more fulfilling than doing for yourself. A classic question, what's better, giving or receiving? Giving is generally better, giving is easier. Receiving, on the other hand, even something as simple as a compliment can trigger embarrassment from the recipient. People sometimes take a compliment, twist it around, and negatively compare it with their feelings of self-worth. It's a whole Torah and psychology around this topic. Suffice to say, giving is a lot simpler than receiving. When you give freely of yourself, when you invest in your spouse through your patience, through your loyalty, through your commitment, what you're really doing is making room for that person inside of you. Less of you, more of them. A powerfully loving and humbling combination. We each possess a spark of godliness. In Marriage 3.0, when spouses open themselves up, making space for the other, they create divine pathways, allowing each to gain access to the other's spark. How amazing is that? How soul essential. This level of sharing and connection supersedes all others. Connecting isn't about vacations or select moments that happen when the stars align, pardon the pun. Lasting connections happen when two souls form one stronger combined unit. The Gemini twin marriage makes room for Hashem, makes room for each other, and generates harmony as a natural byproduct. From one, from two comes three. This is the most Jewish form of marriage. A union between a husband and a wife, a Shavuot union between Hashem and his people, is where the spectrum between sheep and bull dissipates. The opposition between one and two becomes the harmony of three. Truly a godly and earthly goal worth working towards. May we all get there. Marriage isn't the only platform where we learn from our zodiac calendar. Children are sheep-like, needy and subservient to their parents. The life of the Nissan sheep is all about the I am. Children see the world as a series of wants and needs without much concern for others around them. Teenagers can be bullheaded in their need for the ever-increasing freedoms. Teen ego can be defiant. The life of our teenage bull of ER is primarily about the I have. 
teenage ego is more self-preoccupied with how they are viewed, how they compare themselves to others around them. As children grow, the proverbial sheep becomes a bull. We asked before about the timing surrounding the death of Rabbi Akiva's 24,000 teenage students. Were the student sages who perished in ER overconfident Torah's bulls, each trying to best each other, each inevitably meeting a fate commensurate with their harmful actions? There's gematria for 24,000. This number symbolically linked to the evil eye or ayanhara. The combination of ego and ayanhara may well have tipped the balance for them. In the end, teenagers grow. Our task is to try to help them evolve into adults embodying the best traits of sheep and bulls, blending the give and the take. The adulthood of Sivan fuses the I am of Nisan and the I have of ER. Sivan's twin relationships are all about the I think. Rabbi Levi titled this talk, Our Trilogy in Divine Service. So what's our service? Ramping up our self-awareness to blend the best qualities of sheep, bulls, and to embrace our enhanced and hopefully elevated identities with our identical twins, Hashem. Sivan is a time to think about that special moment when we received the Torah, when Hashem committed to the Jewish people and we to Him. A month where partnership of twins expressed personally as a couple and as distinct people among the nations combined to represent a superior level best expressed in a world perfected through the ultimate marriage making the world a dwelling place for our biggest partner. May we see it speedily in our days. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we should break from We'll go to the other room. We'll go to the control. We'll break from Mincha. We'll do Mincha in the uh, breakfast room. And we'll be back with the rest. This is a nice teaser. Short Mincha, no time. There we go. Yeah. Whoa. Poetry here. That was Torah poetry. Yes. That was Holy Go ahead, go ahead.